Hey everyone, welcome. Kelly, KJ Vin Johnson here. Hi Kelly. Hi. Who are you? A.A. <laughs> a. Ron. A.A. A. Ron. Cheers. Cheers. So welcome to the second edition of Sex, Wine, and Rock and Roll. Uh, time, where are we at? This time we are at a Volcano Winery located in Big Island, Hawaii. So a little change of pace from our lanai. Uh, higher elevation and uh, exclusively bringing you volcano wines. Uh, what do you have? I am drinking actually a mead. It is Volcano Winery's Infusion Tea Wine. It's an awesome mead with uh, made from pure macadamia nut honey, and it's got some black tea added. So it's got a little caffeine in my wine, which gets me all jivey. <laughs> One of the things that we thought we would talk about today was breakfast wine, right? We, because you work nights, you're a musician, and a lot of times you're not. You, you're coming home as I'm waking up, so I'm drinking coffee. You're drinking wine. This might be like the perfect it combination. Is. It's. Uh, it is. When other people are getting out of bed, I'm just getting in it. You're not in it to win it. I am in it to win it. <laughs> Always, I'm a winner. Uh, so we thought we would talk about breakfast wines today. We promised that we would come to the table with with a breakfast wine. Yeah. So I think a mead with some caffeine. Yeah, it's a it's a perfect choice. In fact, we even asked the uh, wine clerk, Stuart, whatever, inside what uh, what her choice was. And you might hear some voices in the background. They're setting up for a tour group that's coming in in a couple of hours. And also the birds have something to say. So you're welcome for that. Um, I have chose uh, the Volcano Red, also I think a good breakfast wine. Uh, it's a uh, blend mixed with jabicaba, jojoba, I don't know, some berry that I can't pronounce, J-A-B-O-T-I-C-A-B-A, with cherries and cranberries, and quite frankly, I can taste the volcano in this wine too. So um, one of the things that we try to do whenever we're on the volcano is to visit the winery because it's the best one in Hawaii. It's the and only one. It's the only one on Big Island. And we want to support good behavior. Yeah, absolutely. Um, buy local, support our local businesses, and um, you know, kind of give back to the community. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. so rock and roll, the other thing we're doing here on the Big Island is we saw some amazing concerts this weekend. Um, I saw two nights of the UH Hilo band do an evening of Zappa's music, about two and a half hours of, of Frank Zappa's music. And we had Ike Willis, the Thin Fish, and the Weasel Zappa there. And uh, it was an incredible show, very talented musicians. And um, if they follow you on YouTube, they'll get to see your little... Yeah, not so little. You're big or average. You're at least average size interview with um Mike average. with Ike who was amazing and and guy who's been uh, he's been playing music since he was what seven years old. Started his first band when he's nine. I won't give away all the shocking details, uh, but for sure yeah. check that out. And getting to meet Dweezil was really cool. Um, I know his father Frank Zappa is a legend, but Dweezil is a uh, very talented. Player. He's a shredder on the guitar, and um, he's a professional musician. And just getting to see see Dweezil and to hear uh, all those songs that that I love so very much. Speaking of sh uh, shredders, in addition to Dweezil, we also got to see um, some pretty talented what, the bass player and the violinist. Oh uh, yes, amazing uh, young talent coming out of and college. females. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't even know if they were even 21 yet. They looked like they're about 19, 20 years old, uh, college girls, and so talented. It was very impressive. So if you ever get a chance to check out the Hilo Jazz Band, UH Hilo Jazz Band, highly recommended. They're doing some avant-garde, interesting things with music and having a lot of fun at one point. Uh, the keyboard player and percussionist was dressed as a giant cow. Uh, we had a farmer up on stage. There was a pimp. Probably the only show I've ever been to that had both a pimp and a cow on stage uh, at the same time playing the same song. So 
Uh, if you're in for, for you know, interesting inter- entertainment and uh, amazing talent, check those kids out. <laughs> yeah, pimps and cows. Pimps and cows. Ooh. <laughs> Better have my milk, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um, so speaking of milk, let's go back to talking about breakfast wine. I know you like to talk about music, but um, I, I'm, I'm two of the two of the three topics here are, are sex and wine. So I really enjoy um, mimosas. Mimosas. I love uh, nice prosecco and, uh, so, and some juice. So what exactly is prosecco? Uh, I think it's the Italian version of champagne, because champagne can only be called champagne. Yeah. If it's from the Champagne region of France. Do you know what kind of grapes are in Champagne? Chardonnay grapes. That's right. Oh, you're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've done a lot of non-scientific research into into wine. So, I've invested a lot. I've, I've, you know, I've got a lot of invested in this. My portfolio is uh, doing quite... Poorly? <laughs> no, it's doing well. <laughs> um... My bank account's poor because of my... Because of your investments. My investments. Yeah, it's hard out, Aaron. It was pretty cool at the concert last night to uh, see a lot of people. Zappa's music is considered taboo by some people because he sings so much about sex. Being in an audience with a couple hundred people just hearing the songs like, Why Does It Hurt When I Pee? was uh, was pretty great. And seeing other people like singing along and smiling and dancing to that. And then um, you know, he has some songs about sodomy and all sorts of you know pretty graphic stuff and it's all to you know catchy tunes <laughs> <laughs> all the catchy tunes yeah the earth will do just fine as soon as all the people die <laughs> the earth will be just fine as soon as all the people die yes what else do you have anything else you want to talk about the concert or mm-hmm. musical um had the what, what sex what sex topics are we going to talk about? i like your shirt <laughs> here wear these two glasses Sex therapist. We only touch the heart. Yeah, I, uh, I I get this is one of my favorite shirts. I'm sort of careful when and where I wear it, but you know, sex therapy is one of those topics. It's not brought up all that easily, but yet it's pretty important. So uh, if I get a chance to promote the cause, speaking of which, if yeah, so I think it's a really important topic and one that isn't brought up very easily. So I love my shirt. Also, um, for those of you who follow. My movement on uh, Facebook, it's hashtag uh, Sex Lives Matter, and I am continuously looking for interesting and accurate and also sometimes funny information to post about the importance of sexual health, acceptance, education, and all of the above, right? So I think those are all very important things. I think the you know, smarter you are, the more fun. The sex smarter you are, the better sex you can have. That's a great, that's a great thing. <laughs> Better sex through education. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think we've talked a few times about how pornography has become such, it's like the entire world is Las Vegas now. Anything <laughs> that you want to know, you can find it's on out. Your phone. It's on your phone. And within a few moments, you can look at, learn about any topic. Uh, I think that it's incredibly important that we don't look to pornography to, for sex education. We, we don't watch... There's disinformation. Disinformation, absolutely. Don't well, it's, fa- it's not even disinformation. It's fantasy. We don't, we don't watch The Fast and the Furious to learn how to drive. Don't watch porn to learn how to have sex. However, Pornhub has started a division of educational, uh, educational videos. There's also a, a whole movement of um, pornography made by women that have a very different flair and... Um, French porn, French porn is great. Vintage, vintage porn. It's the cutest thing ever, vintage porn. I highly recommend that if you're not watching porn, to watch it with a friend, by yourself, whatever, but just choose your porn carefully. I agree with that. Yeah, you can see some things that... You can't unsee. You can't unsee. You can't unknow. Yeah, and there's some pretty pretty horrible stuff out there, but I don't know. You and I watched um, some of those old 70s... Movies like Deep Throat and... Um, Alice in Wonderland? Yeah. That's the cutest damn thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> Tweedledee and Tweedledum have a threesome with Alice, by the way. <laughs> oh, you're good. Oh, spoiler alert. 
And uh, instead of two girls in a cup, it's two girls, a guy in a teacup. Teacup. <laughs> wow. So is it okay to drink wine out of a teacup? It's okay to drink wine out of anything except a paper cup. <laughs> oh. I mean, come on. We could actually do a whole episode just on vessels and why they're made the way they are. And I know you've given me a couple of lessons on wine bottles and yeah, why the they're shaped the, the way they are. But um, what you drink your wine out of really changes the flavor. But you're not even drinking wine. You're drinking mead. And it's an excellent mead. And it's uh, speaking of the bottle, I'm going to describe it to people. It's, it's very it's long and like a pyramid. It, it completely tapers off. It's fat at the bottom and... and uh, really narrow at the top it's a little split so it's only 350 milliliters so um so it's uh, it's smaller than the average bottle it's half the size what is the average bottle of wine size five inches 750 milliliters so in addition we've had some other amazing classy events so how many concerts have we been to since this last episode yeah so um I saw it happen twice, but you were at a different show on Friday night. I did. I went and saw Knuckle Bear and Medicine for the People. Love, love me some Knuckle Bear. Little Cinnamon Man. Super talented group of kids. Kids that are probably in their 30s by now. Uh, have so much talent to offer. And then today in an art gallery, we actually got to see a rendition of Knuckle in yeah. print. They had something called altar cards. So if you want to pray to the Church of Naco, you could just go and buy one of those prints, which are 10% off today in downtown Hilo. And uh, and there you go. You got yourself a um, you got yourself a false idol. Yeah, I think that kind of goes against uh, his humbleness. And today's a good day for my ego to die. <laughs> so his most recent album, I guess he wrote when he was a kid, right? Yeah. 18, which is. Um, when a lot of us have uh, our eros, our erotic energy is flowing. And coming can, of age. Coming of age. You can pour that into something like art or music, pour that into something else like, I don't know, crime and drugs or... Yeah, I, I preferred sex and rock and roll. Drank a little bit back then. But my wine education has evolved over the years, along with my wine habits. And uh, I kind of like them. It's you want to talk a little bit about when your wine education, how you got started? That's a good question. I don't even, should get closer. I don't even know. You want to talk about your wine habits? My wine habits and my wine education? Yeah. Um, I think it started off with growing up in California. And um, my personal tastes, like I didn't really, I'm not a, a Budweiser kind of guy. I don't really like watered down beers that much. And um, being in, you know. California, where all the great wines come from, Napa, living and working in the Bay Area, uh, working in Napa and Marin County, I got exposed to a lot of wine, and so I had access to it, and like I said, it, even though I didn't drink that much when I was younger, so I was a, a gym rat, and... How's that and working out for you? <coughs> Mr. Fitness, I'm happier now. <laughs> so, <laughs> why out wine? Less. Why not beer? Well, for me, wine uh, is... is it's delicious. I like the flavor of it better than beer. I also don't like the carbonation of beer. It gets me bloated. I feel like, you know. And usually wine, you can drink a smaller glass of it. An 8-ounce glass of wine versus a 12-ounce beer, you're consuming less ounces, sort of, except for when you drink the whole bottle. <laughs> so listening to a interview, rather, with the winemaker at Lincourt Winery, one of the wines in our wine decadence portfolio, by the way, he talked about how he was a brewmaster and changed to making wine. And we and so the question was, why did you do that? And he said, well, with beer, you get a recipe and that's it. And you just recreate your recipe year after year. And it's the same thing. The ingredients are stable. And so you do it. It's the same year after year. With wine, every single year, it's different. The ground is different. The weather affects the grapes. The grapes are different. The yeast is different. Every single aspect of what. So every single year, year after year, you have to adjust. It's more of an art than a science. So what the same grape grown in the same location one year is going to taste very different the next year. I find that to be pretty remarkable. The other thing that I love so much about wine is that it's living. It's living. 
and it changes and it's personal. And there's so much wine out there that there's bound to be something that for somebody everyone. likes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite things to do is take a non wine drinker and help them become wine drinkers. Yes. <laughs> Making the world a better place yes. by <laughs> creating more alcoholics. Okay. Just because you're tasting wine doesn't make you an alcoholic. <laughs> Please drink responsibly. Yes. And often. So there's been a lot of uh, sex scandal lately in, uh, in the media with everyone from politicians, uh, senators. and Is it uh, really that the scandal is lately? Oh, it's been going on all the time. And a lot of it's coming out. A lot of these things are things that happened years and years ago. And they're finally getting called out on the carpet for their what they got away with. And, you know, and they were thinking they got away with it. And now a lot of careers are going a lot of careers are going down. People are getting. Do you think they thought they were going away with it, or they just thought that it was acceptable? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I think that when you do something wrong, you know that you did something wrong. Really? So I, I like to think that you, people have a moral compass. I know that sometimes I do stuff like cut in line because I'm like, I'm not waiting in this stupid line. I'm just going to walk to the front. I don't cut in line, people. I do. And sometimes I'm a you know, follower people. it's you know sometimes it's uh, not that polite, but you know, I however, can't stand, I however, can't stand being in line behind somebody who's just people that are stupid. People with developmental disabilities a bad name. I, you know, I don't like stupid people. That's why education makes sex better. <laughs> if you're dumb, don't be fucking. <laughs> and there's a lot of dumb fuckers out there. <laughs> but anyway, can we go back to the celebrities getting busted? I think that um, but some of can them. Can we wait? Can we change this from celebrities getting busted to men in power being held responsible for their actions? That's what it is. Celebrities getting busted. Or men in power. It's good to see them go down. But um, boom. they um, you know, they abuse their power, which I think is the the biggest thing that's wrong there. They abuse their power, and now they're now they're paying for it. And uh, I don't really have any sympathy for them. Fuck them. They, you know, they Tell us what their, you think. They abuse their power and and um, grab them by the pussy. Yeah. Drill for oil in national parks. Um, we can launch. Tomahawk land attack missiles at Syria and drop Moabs. This is so far off topic. No, it's just the point is, is their leadership does whatever the fuck they want and they are not held accountable. So you think that once leadership goes back to being held accountable, that women are going to go back to being domestic and subservient and allowing men in power to jerk off while they wear panties? Um, no, I'm, I'm happy that it's being brought to light. I yeah, just. I Boom. And you still have your volcano winery. I still have my volcano winery, volcano red, red blends. Uh, but we did uh, sort of. Uh, what's it Make called? Make some friends. We made some friends and. Uh, and listen. added some beautiful uh, peppery Pinot Noir to this, which, by the way, as long as we're talking about breakfast wines, which we're not, but we're supposed to be. Uh, Pinot Noir is an excellent breakfast wine. It goes so well with things that are spicy. It goes well with things that are sweet and also things that are salty. So if you're... Eggs Benedict. Eggs Benedict. Actually, I would probably do a Chardonnay or a Pinot Grigio with an Eggs Benedict just because of the fat. But um, salty things go well with sweet things. This uh, mead, this infusion tea, perfect. Um, I think this Volcano Red would be a nice blend. Just if if you like a mimosa style, it doesn't totally have to be mimosa. You can do like a sweet wine mixed with some lemonade and some sparkling water. You can do a mimosa would go really well with my other favorite breakfast, huevos rancheros. 
Oh, yeah. Well, spicy, right? Yeah, nice spicy <coughs> rib of sweet wine, sweet wine goes really well with spicy wine. So if you've got a sangria or a sweet rat or anything practically from Volcano Winery, um, they all go really well with huevos, huevos rancheros. Huevos rancheros. Huevos rancheros. Huevos rancheros. Eggs Benedict is my favorite breakfast. It's up there. It's one of my favorites. Um, I think the bunny rabbit <clears throat> loco moco. Yeah. Yeah. Rabbit. Loco it's upsetting moco. how delicious rabbit is. Uh, they're so cute. And they're so delicious. Speaking of which, back in the 50s when a woman uh, was pregnant, they would say the rabbit died. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting thing. Then she would eat a loco moco. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know if that last part's true. A rabbit loco moco. So, a very cool thing happened on the way to the forum. Um, on our way into the park, actually, you got a lifetime pass to National Parks. I'm pretty excited about that. That's like the best birthday present I've gotten all year. Lifetime <laughs> pass to National yeah. Parks. I love, I love National Parks. Um, they are always filled with beauty, uh, preserved mother nature um there's so much respect and integrity i think integrity is something we were talking earlier about i don't think i would describe our national parks as having integrity but it's cute that you do i do i think about last year when um i was up in oregon and we went to you know, crater lake and um, what's I, so great about crater lake there's it's uh preserved it's <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, so are pickles. It's uh, high elevation. It's incredibly beautiful. Um, if you have to ask, you just don't know. It's you, you can't explain. If you, like somebody. So what are your thoughts? So we were somebody who's never had sex can be oh. like, oh, what's so great about sex? Oh. Somebody who's never ask. had wine is huh, you've never had wine. Okay, well, you're probably not going to be friends with us then. <laughs> Never have wine, and you've never had sex. I don't know you. Let us show you the way. Oh, unless unless you're a toddler. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Pre if you're in preschool and you haven't had wine and you haven't had sex, it's probably a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, past the stages of adulthood. So, what's the proper age for wine and sex? Uh, according to I being the law-abiding a citizen that we've established that I am. Twenty-one. Is twenty-one the right? Yeah. Age, unless you're in Canada, in which case it's 18, or yeah. Mexico, or anywhere else in the world. Um, I don't know. I think wine at a young age is actually uh, kind of a cool thing. I read an article once with, uh, like, Joe or Brian Mondavi. Not the... <laughs> Joe or Brian Mondavi. <laughs> One of the other Mondavis, not not Robert Mondavi. And not... Who cares about Mondavi? What do you but tell they, But he... Talk Tell about, our three listeners about the Mondavi, like your Mondavi. Uh, so this guy, Steve Mondavi, was talking about <laughs> growing up. Joe at, Bob. Growing up in the Mondavi family, and they're you know they're Rodney Mondavi. They're a big wine family, and he's like you know it was all around. I grew up around vineyards, and wine is is their life. And he's like I think so. I heard that from Tim Mondavi. <laughs> yes. And then Victor Mondavi said, <laughs> you know. But what, plus Kevin Mondavi, he was like, no way. Yeah. And his wife, Lisa Mondavi. And their daughter, <laughs> Mary Mondavi. Mary? No, she's from California. It's like Andra. 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 <laughs> I know. She likes the. Oh my God, I so like wine, is like my favorite. Oh my God. And they can bark me out the door with a pino. Ocean magic. <laughs> Tell us, I'm sorry for interrupting and distracting and had a lot of wine and not a lot of food. So, Mandavi, fascinating. So he talked about growing up around wine and he's like, so he was taught to respect it. So he drank wine at a very young age and he was like, hey, wine is our life. And he's like, my goal in life is to make wine not fun for my children. <laughs> It's already not fun. They have like, take out, take out the trash. And I'm like, it's just a case of wine bottles. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's time to go to the grocery store. What are we, out of wine and cheese? What the heck? Yes. 
hey, uh, mom, dad, we need toilet paper and we need other food. We don't have any food in the fridge. There's what no are you milk. talking about? There's like four kinds of wine, six kinds of cheese, plus crackers. You're fine. You're yeah. fine. It's completely sustainable. Just learn to cook. Seriously. Yeah. Cook. Salami, prosciutto, <laughs> uh, cheese, Havarti. Oh. What else do you cook? Swiss. You are talking about my very favorite and most epicurious meal, which is known as charcuterie. Or if you're our, fuzz, our friend, what, what the fuck was his name? He called it charcuterie. It is. Which is frightening because sometimes I slip up and call it charcuterie in front of important people. It's delicious. I love cured meats. I love Basically, meat. people, if you don't know what a charcuterie platter is, it's some meat. Quit listening to us. <laughs> Shut up. It's some meat, some cheese, some mustard, something sweet like jam or beef arts, also known as honey, meat, cheese, mustard, olives. That's some it. Capers. Capers. Like sure. Little, Other pickled, pickled things. Pickled things. Pickled things. I love pickled things, especially when they're like little tiny Baby cucumbers or cauliflower. And Baby beans. cucumbers are known as pickles. When they're pickled. <laughs> <laughs> some people like cucumbers. Some people like pickles. I've known some people that have been described as pickled. Oh, yes. I may have resembled that on an occasion. <laughs> try, try to keep it in check and not go that far. But How do you keep it in check? Um, discipline, respect, balance. Oh, wait. We didn't hear about Mandavi. My bad. We did hear about just respect Michael wine. Michael Mandavi with his yeah. His Joey estate. and Butterfucho and Mandavi said respect wine. Yeah, they said they, they drank wine. We were asked. It started off with what is the legal age for sex and wine and rock and roll. Those are I, all three different ages. No, I think rock and roll is from birth. I think that when they're in the womb, they should hear Jimi Hendrix. They should feel uh, the bass. From Primus, they should oh. definitely, they should definitely uh, hear the sweet crooning sounds of Susan Tedeschi or Bonnie Raitt. I think it'll make your fetus happier. <laughs> okay. And fetuses is from sex, so it's part so. of the sex experience. So I think they're like a bird having sex right now. And I think it's a baseball or a football game. I think you're hearing a football game. Yeah, you might mistake it for a sexual encounter. I don't think but there's a fact, lot of football games in the volcano. Ha, ah, touche. Touche. What creates wine? Wine is basically, well, any alcohol is... Yeah, how's it made? Fermented sugars. What does that mean? Anything with sugar, well, you can take a water and sugar, you can take sugar from any fruit... And you add yeast. What he's trying to say is that yeast eats sugar and poops out alcohol. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That is correct. So, different kinds of... So the yeast is actually what makes the alcohol taste so what it does. would you say that you're a yeast poop lover? <laughs> it's the yeast we can do. Yes. I'm a yeast poop lover. <laughs> Which is funny because I really don't like poop. <coughs> oh, you hate poop. I hate poop. I don't like the way it smells. You're fine with throw up, but you hate poop. Oh, poop Weird. grosses me out. I do not like doo-doo, caca. So you would not be into anal sex? Well, I think that if it's clean, I think it can be very pleasurable. So how do you make anal sex clean? <laughs> Shower before and after? Mm. No. High fiber. Okay, High okay fiber. kids at home, that is uh, what we call a myth. A shower before and after sex does not make anal sex clean. Does not eliminate the poop. Uh, diet high in fiber, and then um, if you drink lots of wine, you know. No. Wine has no effect on poop. Your loophole, poophole. <laughs> poophole, loophole. Um, so the thing about anal sex, folks, is you really need to wear a condom. You really need to use lots of lube. And um, as my dear friend and lover here uh, pointed out, fiber, right? So either a enema or a, uh, which is probably, which is healthier than a, a laxative, but essentially you're trying to clean out 
all of the uh, fecal dick. matter. The I dick. Also known dick shoot. Nice clean dick shoot. To pluke. Pluke in the dick shoot. So if we hadn't warned you before about the content of this webcast, we'd like to do so now. If you are uh, at, if you do not like curse words or things about drinking or sex, perhaps you should choose another shit fuck. By fuck. <laughs> you should. <laughs> mm. Let's drink wine and talk about butt fucking. Excellent. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, Yum. Smells, Ow. Smells funny. <laughs> so I think that's actually an important topic to, I don't know, graze at this moment. Uh, and maybe this isn't, or maybe this is a topic for a future show. But this whole idea that if you fall into a particular category, you must like a certain collective of activities. Let me just tell you, there are plenty of lovely mm -hmm. homosexual males out there that are not into anal sex. So... Um, if that was your reason for searching out a homosexual male, you should probably choose differently. Um, people yeah. have a number of different ways of exploring their sexuality. sexuality, and it's not always the predominant narrative. Yeah, and you should never assume, because then you make an ass out of you and me. Me and you. Me and you. Which brings us to pegging, which is a whole other topic. Oh, ouch. Never been pegged. Um, I had a friend once that said he was uh, he was interested in trying that. And uh, it got me to thinking, like, mm, I don't know, maybe. And then uh, I watched a video on it, and I was like, nope. Not, not, no, not, no. Nah. It's not for me. Some people like pickles. Some people like cucumbers. I don't think pegging is for me. There's a whole um, actual lesson here, which, again, maybe for another topic, about um, male prostates and the lever of pleasure and how the male prostate is very much similar to the female G area, also known as the G spots. Um, but there's a lot of goodness that can come from prostate massage, uh, which can be uh, achieved through anal penetration. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. A Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio. So, Pinot Grigio. as this <laughs> comes winding down. Oh, winding down. Cute, cute, down, cute. I want to say thank you for listening and putting up with us. I am just about as happy as can be. I'm with my best friend and lover. We're drinking wine. We are in a volcano. My favorite place on the planet. And um, it's beautiful. It's cold. It's... Oh, well, cold is... I said it was cold earlier, but I feel like I'm warming up. It could be the wine. Yeah, because the sun is setting and the temperature is actually dropping. So it's funny that the wine is warming you up, but it's actually getting cold. er 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 So... To our friends that have listened to this and put up with us. Cheers to all five of you. Thank you. We love you. And I look forward to talking with you and hearing your feedback. And uh, the future of sex, wine, and rock and roll. To be continued. If there are other topics that you want to hear about, specific things you want us to cover, uh, don't be afraid to ask us questions. If we don't know the answer, we'll make it up. And uh, we are having so much fun doing this in random places and expeditionary style. Expeditionary. Yeah, expeditionary position is my favorite position. And, um. <laughs> all right. I'm excited to hear what that is. We'll talk to you all soon. Thanks and cheers. Cheers. <laughs>